Hi, I'm Annabelle and I'm one of the product designers here at GitLab. And in this video, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough on how to contribute to GitLab by um, picking an issue, making the changes, and creating a merge request. The goal of this is to help onboard designers um, to assist with our Q4 OKR, which is closing 100 issues in this epic that we're calling Beautifying the UI. Um, so there are, I don't know, like 30 issues left maybe, but um, sometimes contributing can be a little difficult or frustrating. So hopefully this video will help smooth things over and um, we can get more designers contributing to the code base. So with that, I'm going to share my screen. So this is the epic right here. Um, the first step would be looking through it. All of the open ones are in green and you can see if someone's already been assigned to it or not. So you would pick one. In this case, I'm gonna walk through this one that I just chose um, a couple hours ago. Um, the first step would be to assign it to yourself so no one else will pick that up and work on it at the same time as you and then give it uh, the milestone that you're currently working on in this case is 12.5 but this okay is going to take place over three milestones so don't feel too much pressure to get it done in 12.5 um, this issue also has three main UI bugs I'm gonna focus just on this last one uh, just for the purpose of this video but normally I would fix everything here in one merge request unless it Unless it spans, you know, dozens of files and you have to make a ton of changes in that case, definitely split it into multiple merge requests, but that should rarely happen. Um, so start off by starting up the GDK. Um, there's documentation elsewhere for that and making sure that you have the latest changes on master, which I should. Um, and this is just the way that I work, but um, it, it works pretty well. I know there's a lot, you know, you can create a merge request straight from the issue this way, but I usually just copy the issue number and create my branch right here. Um, we'll call it Epic Sidebar Updates. Um, and then you can see that you're on your branch. What this does is when you push to um, your remote, it will automatically associate the merge request with the issue number. So there'll be links and it'll auto close or at least mention it when, when the merge request is finally merged. So I hope this is still working. So the problem is um, at the issue level and actually the issue sidebar has is correct and the epic sidebar has some inconsistencies that we need to fix so we'll open up an issue and we'll open up an epic you can see here that this little um whoops this little carrot thing is slightly off it's kind of top aligned whereas on the issue Sidebar, it's perfectly vertically aligned within the little section right here. It's a it's a small thing, but when you when you go back and forth, you can really tell the difference. So um, to fix this, I would probably start by inspecting it and see why it's like that. Um, you can look at the issue one and, and see how the two are different. Um, I took a quick look at this already, so. In this case, I'm pretty sure that the problem is this line height and the inline flex. So now you can see that it's vertically aligned, just like the issue sidebar. Unfortunately, that broke these things. So I'm going to start by locating those places where they're broken. Um, it's in the epics SAS file on line 31. And I use VS Code for this. Um, on 31, right here. So I'll just comment that out for now. And the other problem was inline flex, which is in the sidebar file, line 64.
and comment that one out too. Just to double check that it did in fact fix what I think it will. And then refresh the page. And it's still aligned properly. It looks like it is. So now the problem is these links are all crazy. Um, it looks like maybe they needed the line height. We also have different icons being used. These are our custom SVGs, whereas this is Font Awesome. We want to keep using our SVG, so definitely don't want to change that. And since this is supposed to be a smaller fix, theoretically this will eventually be fixed properly in the design system and we won't have these little inconsistencies. But for now, it kind of looks like we need to put the line height back. So if I do line height 14, it is aligned properly and that's what it was before. So this, it was previously, it looks like it was done on button sidebar action right here. Um, which is too global and that's being used on all kinds of buttons on the sidebar so we will have to be more specific possibly button link will do it um, i'll check if button link is being used anywhere else and it's not so i can't just add this there um, so i think the boring solution it's not my favorite but we'll just add button link so it's more specific and I think we can just remove this. Um, just do it for now anyway. So hopefully that will fix the alignment of the two edits and icons and this little double carrot. Yeah, it did. Okay, this might introduce regression so I'm gonna go back and look at it a little bit better um, or a little bit more in a bit, but let's push it anyway. So here are my two changes, um, my rank get status to see what the changes were, and I'm going to add them. Sure, we're still good, and we are. Okay, so next is the commit message, and this is one of the things that maybe trip people up, or trips people up sometimes if they're doing really big merge requests, but we do have a workflow detailed in our docs and we adhere to specific commit message guidelines, which you can read more about um, through some of these links. But basically danger bot's gonna yell at you if you don't do it right, so you might as well do it right the first time. Um, you can't do a commit message that's less than three words, so something like add change log or update specs or something, it's gonna, the pipeline will fail um, and you'll have to fix it anyway. So. You can read these you know, whenever you want. Um, typically for a change to the small, I wouldn't add a commit message body, but um, we, we certainly are welcome to. Um, for now, I'm just gonna write a, a really small commit message. Um, what did we do? Ooh, baby's kicking. Sorry. So yeah, the baby also really likes a good commit message. Um, update epic sidebar collapse button too much issue so far. That's not great, but you know, I can fix it later because I'm going to make more changes. And then once you've committed it, you can push to your branch. Um, And then we generate this super handy link. If you hit command and hover over it, it'll take you straight there. So you don't have to copy and paste, it's really helpful. And then here is your merge request form. Um, the way I like to do it, and again, this is just me, um, you can see how it's already linked correctly because I, I named my branch name with the issue. We shouldn't be closing issues anymore. Um, automatically because we want to verify that they are fixed in staging before we close the issue so I would just change that to mentions um, sign it to yourself just so that you keep track of it um, delete source branch when merge request is accepted and if you have multiple commits you can choose to squash them we only have one right now and I usually prefer to manually squash anyway so I can see what the commit message will be and then you can see that the um, description is 
it's got all these checkboxes. So the first item is what does this merge request do? And then there's a placeholder that you can delete and fill in with your own information. Um, in this case, it'll, this will eventually have multiple fixes, so I'm gonna just put them in bullets. Um, updates, the collapse, carrot button to match issue sidebar. Actually, I'll do vertically aligns. And some things like availability and testing aren't needed. Security for this particular fix is definitely not needed. Um, I'm gonna leave it. Delete sections that you think aren't needed like this, or you can just leave it. To be safe, you could just leave it. But um, it does give you some check boxes for the conformity, and one of them is change log entry. Always need that for a UI fix. So I'm going to, oh, first I'm gonna update the screenshots so that the merge request reviewer knows exactly what changed right off the bat. And it'll just make the whole review process a lot faster. Um, you can use this cool markdown table, which is always really helpful. So you can see the changes easily um, and change oops, this to four, this to after, and this is the after, since this is still showing my changes. I'm going to just take a screenshot of that. And then go back to master so I can see the, uh, the old version. And a, a tip is get checkout dash. We'll go back to whatever your last branch was. So every time you do it, it'll just go back and forth. It's really, really handy. And if I refresh this, it should be um, misaligned again. Yeah, it's really subtle, but I think it's clear and then take a screenshot here and then add both of them is this the before oh that's before it's the after And now it's nicely aligned. You might want to add an arrow or something pointing to it if it's not clear, because it really isn't. But um, I'm just going to leave it like that. And then you submit your merge request. The next step here would be to add a change log. You could have done this while you were still making your changes and committed all of it at once. But the change log does include a merge request number option that it's nice if you fill in. So you would have to do two commits regardless, as far as I know. Um, so you can see the change log docs are linked. And you run Okay, I'm not actually seeing how you run it, but I already know. So um, go back to your branch. And then I would add a change log entry that would say um, vertically align collapse button on epic sidebar. And it was a bug fix, so I'll choose two. And then you can see that that file has been added. Um, I'm going to go in and open that file in VS Code. And you can see there's a merge request section or whatever you call that here. And I'm going to add my merge request number. There, so now I've got my change log entry um, and I would just add it. And again, you have to commit it. So in this case, it doesn't really matter what uh, your, your commit message is gonna be because you're gonna squash it. In this case, I'll just do add change log. Um, to squash your commits, you can take a look at your git log and you should see your latest two here. Here's my first one and here's the one I just added for the change log. We obviously don't, that doesn't adhere to our standards and danger bot will not be happy because it's only two words. It's also not helpful in any way to anyone to see add change log. Um, 
So I'm going to squash that one into the first one. And the current message is fine, so I'll just leave it. Um, and, and squashing docs, you can Google and you can see how to how to do that. And it doesn't have to be in Vim; it can be in whatever text editor you want. And then I'm going to uh, push that change. And you have to force push it because you are essentially rewriting your commit history. And now when you go back to your merge request, you should see still one commit, but two changes or three changes in this case. So you can see one commit and you've got your change here, your change here and your uh, change log entry. So I can check change log entry done. Um, other things to do, you can check all these um, links out and make sure that you're adhering to our style guides and stuff, database guides that won't apply. Um, Definitely test in supported browsers if you think that a change might be broken in IE or something like that. We support the latest version of all modern browsers like Chrome, Safari, and uh, Firefox, and also Edge, and I want to say IE 11, but you can, yeah, right here. Um, you can test it in those and make sure that nothing crazy is happening. So what I would do now is wait for the pipeline to run. I'm hoping it will pass because I haven't done anything that would warrant a spec failure as far as I can see. If there is, you know, just check out why it failed and, and you can fix it or ask a developer for help if you need to. Um, and once the merge request or once the pipeline passes, feel free to reassign it to whoever shows up on the danger bot. Um, Reviewer roulette. An example of that would be in this merge request. Reviewer roulette is here and they've suggested a reviewer and a maintainer for both front end and back end. Since this is just front end, it should only suggest front end people. And you can also see some of the people who can review your merge request are right here. Um, so I think that kind of covers everything. And this was all, if everything kind of goes as planned, a lot of things can come up with, you know, GDK problems or I don't, unintended commits, migration changes, um, I don't know. A lot of things can go wrong, so feel free to reach out to me or any of the front end developers, they're super helpful. Um, but I might make another video, I guess, or I should, I was planning on doing a blog post anyway with some of the stuff written down and I can probably add a troubleshooting section as well. So, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.